Here are the 11 steps to build a SaaS solution and a SaaS business. Step one, you need to have a problem and you need to have an ideal solution for this problem. Now this problem and this solution could come from one of your experiences. It really doesn't matter which industry you're in. And if you're a project manager, business analyst, if you're a programmer, if you're a business owner, you definitely have one of these problems. I'll give you a couple of examples. How to analyze a website's authority is a problem. We all use Amazon. When we go to Amazon, we search something and the results show up, they need to be relevant, right? If they're not relevant, that's a problem. When you add the items to cart, you go to checkout. If I want to send that order as a gift and I'm not able to send it as a gift, that's a problem. What's the solution? Put a checkbox, make sure that you're able to put a gift message. And if that checkbox is checked, make sure that the invoice does not have the price on it because you don't want somebody getting your gift, seeing the price. This is just one very basic example. Number two is have a proof of concept. What does this mean? We just talked about the gift box at the checkout, or we just talked about your search results not being relevant. We can write code to fix these problems. So in step two, you don't even have to start thinking about a SaaS business. Just solve that problem. Make sure that you have the proof of concept, that you have solved that problem, and that it works. Step three, let's stick to the search idea. If I'm searching for something and the results are not relevant, it means that whatever I pick from the database of products, the results are not relevant to the search query. Now, step three is probably the most important step here. We're gonna ask ourselves, how many people are going through this problem? How many businesses or how many users in the world have this challenge? Essentially, what you're doing on step three is you're identifying your ideal demographic and your market. Your market could be a thousand people, your market could be a billion people. Let's look at both examples. If you want to offer free email service, your ideal market is billions of people because billions of people use email. If you want to create a SaaS product that does advanced search and filter, your ideal market are all the business owners, possibly, that have an e-commerce business. Correct? Then you're looking at Big Commerce, Shopify, Magento, Volusion, and a couple of other solutions. In the United States alone, your ideal market is probably about half a million people. Step four is pricing. Now we're getting into a bit more detail. You need to identify your price. You need to identify your pricing model and range because that's going to further identify your ideal demographic. If you say that your price point is $10 per month, out of those half a million businesses, probably 450,000 can afford your business. If your price point is $500 per month, you're going to eliminate 95% of that audience because they will not be able to afford your business because they will not be able to afford $500 a month. Also, supply and demand. If your product is too basic and too cheap, it's going to be easy to duplicate for your competitors. If your product is too detailed, too advanced, and too expensive, you are limiting your market significantly. You're gonna have 10 clients maybe, or 20 clients. This is why step four is the most important step. We talked about supply and demand. That brings us to step five. Step five is competitive research. Who else has created a solution like this? And what do they charge for the service? Is it too expensive? Is it too cheap? Step five is probably the next most important step because it gives you the opportunity to identify what is being done well and what is not being done. And step five allows you to innovate, which is one of the most important things in SaaS business. The ideal thing to do here is to create a feature or functionality matrix. What do the competitors have that you don't have? What do they charge versus what you want to charge? And if both make sense. This is why the concept of supply and demand is genius. Because if you want to charge more money, you have to create more demand. And to create more demand, you have to find the difference in functionality or future that will allow your audience to be wowed, to be impressed. Step six is your technology stack. What are you going to build the SaaS solution on? Is it going to be on Laravel PHP? 
Is it going to be on Python? Is it going to be on JavaScript? And that all depends on what kind of objective you have for the SaaS solution. If you're going to have billions of records like an Airbnb, you better have a system that will support that. If you're going to need millions and millions of terabytes of storage because of Instagram or TikTok videos take space, you better think about that and add that to your infrastructure. You don't want to go get an AWS server that costs a thousand dollars a month. So nailing down the technology stack based on the concept is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headache in the future. Step seven is actually building the infrastructure and the code for your SaaS solution. During step seven, first you want to create wireframes and mockups and really nail down the user flow. Where will they go? How will they sign up? In your admin panel, what will they do? How are they going to interact with your SaaS solution? What problems will they solve and how will they solve it? Is it easy to use? Does it have clear instruction? Step eight is QA. Once you have your solution, you want professional QA engineer to actually go through the solution and test it. Now your SaaS solution might be integrating with a third party API. Your SaaS solution might have a database or your SaaS solution might have a single sign-on functionality that works with Facebook or Google. Somebody needs to test it. As a matter of fact, once the QA engineer is done testing and writes down all the bugs, it would be ideal for you to find 10, 20, 30 users who can test the solution because that will give you the following. It will give you ideas. It will identify how easy your tool is to use or how hard it is to use. And the actual users who are testing it are going to give you their feedback. Which takes me to step nine. Build the front end of your website. Front end means your CMS, your content management system, that will actually introduce how you use this tool. It's going to have a home page. It's going to have features. It's going to have a pricing page. It's going to have a contact us page and possibly a demo. This is also an important step because all the previous steps prepared you to get to this point. What we recommend at Optimum 7 is that you have a front end that's either a WordPress or a powerful CMS, which is your www.mytool.com. And then you have a subdomain like a app.mytool.com that takes you to the functionality or the future. This is a headless implementation. We implement it this way because you don't want the actual SaaS tool to be mixed with the front end of your solution. This is for marketing purposes. You want to make it easy to edit the front end of the website and the back end needs to have code control. By the end of step nine, you should have a full on working SaaS solution that people can sign up for and they can use and they can test. Also, you should have a full front end website that allows you to market your solution. Step 10 is marketing and getting users. This is the step that's going to take the longest amount of time. This is the step that's going to be ongoing and that you will constantly optimize. Are you doing content marketing and SEO to show up for the problem that you're solving? Are you doing Google AdWords and paid search to get the users to your site? Are you doing affiliate marketing so you can pay commissions for whomever sends you a potential customer? Are you doing partnerships with agencies, with B2B businesses that send you these types of users who need the solution? Are you doing PR so that you can get your name out there? Or are you doing magazine or online publishing placements so that your potential audience and buyer hears about your solution? And step 11 is support and documentation. Now, a lot of people will put step 11 before step 10. I am not doing that for a specific reason because your documentation and your support will depend on the feedback that you get from those first 100, 200, 300 users. That's why just like step 10, step 11 is an ongoing step and process that you will continue to optimize and optimize. As you can see, creating a SaaS solution is not easy. It has to be a problem that you're passionate about. It has to be a solution that you know works. It has to get you excited. It has to get your customers excited. It has to be something that makes your customer say, wow, I didn't know there was a solution like that, or wow, I didn't know that could be done. At Optimum 7, over the past seven years, we built about 20 SaaS solutions for ourselves and for our clients. And these 11 steps should be able to guide you in the right direction. This is in no way, shape or form 
everything that you have to do. There is a lot more to creating a SaaS solution, but at a high level, these 11 steps will get you where you need to go. If you have any questions about creating SaaS solutions, please reach out to us. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos on e-commerce, custom development, marketing, and much more. And leave us a comment if you'd like to discuss the contents of this video further.